Holy smoke. They did that in one one minute. A bag of corn chips. And one whole loaf of bread took about two minutes. Continued. What a bad landlord we have. Look at this. Now I showed it. It was two or three days ago. Okay. And it's still the same. The guy has never heard of asphalt. He's never heard of concrete. He's never heard of gravel. Look at it. I went to Hopewell yesterday. It was so nice. There were sidewalks, concrete sidewalks. The parking lots were black-topped. There wasn't any mud. I go to Hopewell. My shoes are all mud. OK, my pants are all mud. I feel like a hick. You think this place is worth $725 a month? Do you think so? No, oh, this is Mudville. 12581 is the zip code. Mudville, New York, 12581. And Jay from the post office, the Stanfordville post office, came storming over here this morning, mad because uh, he was seen on TV. Last week, if you remember, on March 5th, or was it a couple weeks ago, it was a big event. I had sued 60 people. I'd taken the complaints to the post office and served the people by Federal Rules of Civil Procedure, Rule 4D. It was a big event. It cost $138. And I videotaped the mailing of it and putting the stamps on and getting them all done, 60 defendants. And he came over here mad because he was seen on TV. Well, I say it's a good thing that somebody called him up and said they saw him on TV. It shows that people are watching public access in Stanfordville. And it shows them that uh, Cablevision is doing its job, because that was the program that was supposed to be on. That's good news for me. But I can't see why he's so exercised, uh, because he was seen on TV. He says, you don't have permission to videotape people and put them on TV. I told him that the law in the state of New York is anything can be recorded as long as one person knows it's recorded. He says, I didn't know I was recorded. I said, no, but I did. I can't see why he's so upset. And his driveway, I have to go to the post office, and I have to go through puddles like this and potholes. And it's been that way for six months, and they haven't done a thing about it. Not a thing. For six months, I've had to go through mud and ruts and puddles to get the service of the United States Post Office. So he keeps giving reasons that they can't do it because it's Route 82 and it's a state road and they have to do this and that. But how come Mark Germain, his is blacktopped and it's on the same road? No, something's very screwy there. I think the thing to do is to go above them and go to their supervisor, uh, the uh, district supervisor of the United States Postal Service. That's outrageous. Postal patrons should not have to go through mud and potholes and ridges. And in spite of what you read in the newspaper, people do not die in alphabetical order. And why are Bob and Joan the perfect couple? He's a hypochondriac and she's a pill. So what is all this dishevelment? Well, it's the museum. It's time to unstack each column and to check the contents and to list the contents and to restack it and then to renumber number them in great big letters. Bill Houston did columns one two. Eight. Well, there's an obvious mistake. Seven six. That should be eight six. 
Oh, they got exchanged. Oh, you want to know who did that penny? She knocked down both of them. Okay, Bill Houston did columns 9 through 15. And one day last week I did column 16. Takes about an hour. This morning, off of Wednesday's to-do list, three days ago, I did column 16. And I wanted to find the electric outlet, which got covered up in July and should have been uncovered last July. So I did column 18, no electric outlet. But the electric outlet did appear behind column 19. And so this finishes it for today. It was really too much. It's pretty tough on the back. We'll do column 20. Unstack it. Check the contacts. Make a new list of the index of contents. And uh, make new labels. And why are Bob and Joan the perfect couple? He's a hypochondriac and she's a pill. Franklin 3 is listing starboard. Got to correct that. Yonkers has a new library building and they can't find the book. They don't know where they put it. Uh, that's okay. Uh, Micron Technology? Sunshine. Okay. What do you need? The address? Just the address and telephone number. Okay. It's, uh, the address is 8,000. 8,000. South Federal Way. South Federal Way. Yeah. Box 6. That is Post Office Box 6. Uh-huh. Boise, Indiana. Bison? Boise, B-O-I-S-E. Boise, Indiana. Say, uh, spell that again, please. B as in boy. Uh-huh. O-I-S-E. Oh, oh, Boise. Boise. Oh, yeah. Uh, Idaho. Yeah, Boise. Idaho. Sorry, Idaho. Okay, thanks. And the zip? Uh, 83707. 83707. Okay, the telephone number is record 208. 208-368-4000. Oh, thanks. The next one is Microsoft. Microsoft. Microsoft Corporation. Okay. That is one, the number one. Mm -hmm. okay. One? Yeah, one. Mm -hmm. Microsoft Way. One Microsoft Way. Redmond. R-E-D-M-O-N-D? -E yeah. Redmond, Washington. W-A, Washington. Yeah. Okay. 98052. 98052. And the telephone is 425-425-882-882. 8080. 8080. Yep. And you're, you're using Standard Poor's Volume 1. Standard Poor's the main one. Yeah. All right. Uh, third one is Morgan Stanley. Morgan Stanley.
I'll give you the one. Philip J. Purcell is the CEO. Yeah, hold on. It's that one. Uh, there's uh, about two or three pages of listings. That's yeah. Can you find the one that says per, uh, Purcell is the CEO? That's the one we need. Uh, I'll have to go all the way down. Morgan Stanley, Dean Breeder. Philip J. Purcell. All right, Morgan Stanley, D. Dog W. D. W. Yeah, Dean Witter, Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Philip Purcell. Yeah. Fifteen eighty-five Broadway. Fifteen eighty-five Broadway. N. Y. N. Y. One zero zero three six. One zero zero three six two one two. Seven six one. Seven six one. Four thousand. And the next one's right underneath that. Motorola. Yeah. A few pages ahead. East Algonquin Road. I have it. Yeah. Uh, Schomburg, S-C-H-A-U-M-B-U-R-G. S-C-H-A-U-M-B-E-R-G? B-U-R-G. B-U-R-G. Okay. Illinois. Illinois. 60196. 60196. That's 847-576-576-5000. Oh, thanks. And the last one's Murphy Oil. Murphy Oil Company. Uh, Claiborne P. D. Ming Deming is the CEO. Dash five five five. Fourth Avenue. Fourth Ave. Fourth Avenue Southwest. Southwest. In the city? Calgary. Yeah. Uh, what province is that? Ontario. No, it's not Ontario. But gee, but just three, aren't they in the United States? Where? It's got to be in the United States. Don't they have one in the United States? Oh, yeah. There is, uh, the, the main branch is in uh, Canada. This one, United States, is Murphy Oil Corporation. Mm -hmm. Different. 200 e East Beach Street. East Beach Street. Beach. It, is that beach with a double E? P as in Paul. Beach. Oh, Peach. Yeah. Gotcha. Peach Street. Box 7000. Okay. El Dorado. El Dorado. Yeah. Arizona. Arizona. 71731. 71731. California is 870. 860. 862. 8611. 6611. Oh, thank you very much. You're very welcome. Bye-bye. That was Standard & Poor's 1, Yonkers Library. And what are these people? These are the people who are going to write and ask them to sponsor the jokes on TV, on network television, NBC, ABC, or CBS. And this list, we've been doing this a long time. This is for uh, 321 to 330. We have asked... Uh, 310 of the richest people in America to sponsor 
the jokes on network television. Uh, folks, we uh, sent $136 to Canon to get back the uh, audio from my three-year-old Canon camcorder. And it's, it's better than the new ones, folks. It's three years old and it's better than the new ones. At least it has uh, an external mic jack so that you can have uh, a close-up microphone. It's much better than the microphone on the camera. And also you have a remote. Uh, the uh, public access conference in Brooklyn was good. Uh, it certainly was busy. Uh, I, one of the things that came out, there were a lot of lawyers all around, you know, modeling the telecommunications picture. And here's one thing uh, that's put out by a group of lawyers in Boston. I told him a liar joke, and he told me a liar joke. But this is interesting. Bear this in mind, that Cablevision lost a franchise. You want to know why they lost the franchise? Unfortunately, it wasn't here around New York. It was in Ohio. a great job. Money in the bank. Last month someone asked if I read the Bible. The Bible? I'm successful, I'm happy. What do I need the Bible for? I can get more from the Wall Street Journal. But that made me curious. So I decided to take a second look. look. I'm on my feet all day. When I go home, I just want to turn on the TV and relax. But read the Bible? All those these and thous and begats? Who wants to struggle with that after waiting on customers all day? But then a friend showed me this version written in modern English, and I was surprised. It this was... guy I play hoops with said I should start reading it. The Bible. Man, I said, I don't need no Bible. I mean, it just ain't cool. So he goes, I read it all the time. And he beat me by 20 points. So he gives me his Bible. I read it. It ain't hoops, but it ain't bad. What's your excuse? Before you make an excuse to avoid reading the Bible, stop, take a second look, pick up the Bible for five minutes, and you may pick it up for a lifetime. Uh, money in the bank. Last month, someone asked if I read the Bible. The Bible? I'm successful, I'm happy. What do I need the Bible for? I can get more from the Wall Street Journal. But that made me curious. So I decided to take a second look. look. I'm on my feet all day. When I go home, I just want to turn on the TV and relax. But read the Bible? All those these and thous and begats? Who wants to struggle with that after waiting on customers all day? But then a friend showed me this version written in modern English, and I was surprised. It this was... guy I play hoops with said I should start reading it. The Bible. Man, I said, I don't need no Bible. I mean, it just ain't cool. So he goes, I read it all the time and he beat me by 20 points. So he gives me his Bible, I read it, it ain't hoops, but it ain't bad. What's your excuse? Before you make an excuse to avoid reading the Bible, stop, take a second look, pick up the Bible for five minutes, and you may pick it up for a lifetime. The PBS stations and got very excited when they introduced a young man by the name of Tim Janis, an American composer. Well, I'm going to show you Tim when he was a much younger man and he was composing Irish music.
Well, Kelly, it is time to end our show, and we hope that you've all had a great time watching Irish Express TV. If you like our show, please tell a friend. Salam. See you next week. a girl who could steal any heart, anywhere, anytime. And I'll put you wise how you'll recognize this wonderful girl of mine. If her eyes are blue as skies, that's Peggy Sly little rogue If she talks with a cute little brogue Sweet personality Full of rascality That's Peggy O'Neill Everything's planned for a Some guys from Scotland who proclaim us, I will walk 5,000 miles. When I wake up, well, I know I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be the man who makes up next to you. When I go out, yeah, I know I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be the man who goes along with you. If I get drunk, well, I know I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be the man who gets drunk next to you. And if I hit back, yeah, I know I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be the man who's hebering to you. But I would walk 500 miles and I would walk 500 more to be the man who walks a thousand miles to fall down at you. When I'm watching, I know I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be the man who's working hard for you. And when the money comes in for the work I do, I'll pass almost every penny on to you. And when I'm old, well, I know I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be the man who's never in the blue. And when I'm old, well, I know I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be the man who comes back home to you. And if I broke, well, I know I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be the man who's going over you. But I would walk 500 miles an hour I would walk 500 more Just to be a man who walks a thousand miles to fall down at I'm gonna be the man who's lonely without you And when I'm dreaming Well, I know I'm gonna dream I'm gonna dream about the time when I'm with you When I go out when I go out, Well, I know I'm gonna be I'm gonna be the man who goes along with you And when I come home when I come home yes, I know I'm gonna be I'm gonna be the man who comes back home with you I'm gonna be the man who's coming home But I would walk 500 miles and I would walk 500 more to be the man who walks a thousand miles to fall down at your door.
Now let's hear from the funniest man on both So that's it, 40 dubs. My chat with Glendor on 38 cable TV systems.
This is the uh, March 20th in mail. Came in March 20th, Thursday. I've already processed nine pieces. The first one was uh, 10 tapes from uh, Portland, Oregon. And uh, B. Coulter, you're doing a good job. Okay, you're doing a very good job. And I'll have to call the executive director there and let them know that. And so I processed nine of them already. There's six legal papers. Uh, they are uh, Schofield in the United States District Court, Atlanta. Uh, the San Francisco uh, Court is again acting like a fugitive. They've been sued, and yet they send back the complaint. Karen Murphy's doing the same thing. She's the uh, clerk of the county of Nassau. Uh, Amon in the Eastern District of New York has gone bluey. And so that's going to be another fight and another lawsuit against another federal judge. Uh, in uh, Madsen in the Second Circuit, he complains that my uh, papers were inadequate, but I want to see those. I don't believe that they are. And anyway, he said he went and copied them for me and uh, instead of sending it back to me. So I have to thank him for that in a funny way. And Wilson, Luddick, and Mott, uh, they're all mixed up in the Fourth Circuit with the clerk there, Patricia Connor. So that's the fifth legal paper. And the sixth one is that from the Second Circuit that Christine Hill has retired. And it has to be forwarded to her address. Okay, she's still a defendant. And she still has to defend herself. And they tore off the front page so that you don't know whose copy they're sending back to you. So there's more hanky-panky. And this is the 10th in mail, and that looks like a legal paper, too. This is John Schwartz of Free Speech TV. They're doing a lot of anti-war programming. Anti-war programming, good for you. picking it up from Free ah. Speech TV. This is Glendora, ah. chat with Glendora. And what's all over the floor here? Oh, did we catch some more dirty judges? Hmm, I'll say. 
quite a few of them this week. I'll tell you about this group. It's in the process of being collated, labeled, stuffed, and added to who to sue. March the 25th, year 2003, Anno Domini, three months since Christmas. Judicial Council of the Tenth Circuit, number 2003, 10372-05. That means the Tenth Judicial Complaint the Tenth Circuit has received in this year. Glendora shows cause why the Tenth Circuit should not stoop to Nazism. Show cause number one. You just cannot take it, can you? Glendora discloses more runaway federal judges. An old woman, 74 years old, a poor person, informer paupers, cracks up the Tenth Circuit. Show cause number two. For Glendora, it ends with a bang. For this Tenth Circuit, it ends with a whimper. Show cause number three. You just, de facto, do not believe in free speech. De facto, you turned your backs on the age of reason, the 1700s, Voltaire. I disagree with what you say, but will defend to my death your right to say it. You just don't like the Constitution, do you? You just don't like being American, do you? You like anti-Americanism. You like apostasy. Show cause number four. You choose to have the Tenth Circuit crumbled to rubble by an indigent septuagenarian. Show cause number five. Glendora beats the Tenth Circuit. Stentorian victory. Show cause number six. You practice censorship. What do you think of that, Iraq and Afghanistan? Now this is the Tenth Circuit in Denver, Colorado, telling Glendora that she cannot file any more complaints against bad judges. <laughs> Show cause number seven. You embrace First Amendment retaliation, and you will be sued for that under color of state, Title 47 U.S. Code, Section Section 1983 and 1985. Conspiracy. You are state actors. Show cause number eight. Don't you know the way to stop complaints about bad judges is to eliminate bad judges? Eliminating the speaker solves nothing. It just prolongs discovery of how bad you are. Show cause number nine. This is Glendora to the judges of the Tenth Circuit, Denver, Colorado. Show cause why she should not be uh, gagged from filing complaints about bad judges. Isn't this unbelievable in America? You are committing treason against the USA. You must be impeached. You must hand in your resignations now. Show cause number 10. Stripping Glendora, for stopping Glendora from writing number 351 bad judges complaints does not stop bad judges complaints. Glendora can always complain to Congress about you bad judges, to Mecham, the administrator of U.S. courts, so-called, to the president of the United States of America, some president. He was elected by the Sup chief justice of the Supreme Court, to the public on 37 TV stations across America. That's you folks, right here and now. Show cause number 11. Glendora has nothing to lose, and you have everything to lose. Glendora has abundance to gain, and you have a bald-faced zero to gain. Show cause number 12. Do you like being in the museum with the Gestapos and the KBGs? Do you like the stench? Show cause number 13. This is Glendora to all the judges 
on the on the Tenth Circuit, Denver, Colorado. A Glenn, again, Glendora what, has nothing to lose. The Tenth Circuit is totally dysfunctional. It is useless. It is U.S. Treasury waste. Show cause number 14. Why do you truncate our time to answer and sprawl out your time to answer so amorphously? Show cause number 11. You embrace first Amendment retaliation, and you will be sued for that under the color of state. Well, we did that one. Okay. Show cause number 15, incest. The circuit judicial uh, council process is ribald incest. Abandon, profligate, dissolute, and re renegade. The judges are not, are so intertwined, one with another, like the elastics of a baseball, that the judge doing the judging is as bad as the judge being judged. And it's ad nauseum. And paragraph number 27 is reserved. Now again, the Tenth Circuit told me to show cause why I should not be enjoined from complaining about bad judges. Now is that American, folks? Regarde, Glendors, Interlinears, and Marginalias Infra. Judicial Council of the Tenth Circuit. Now I counted up their lies. I think there's about eight lies here uh, that these judges have written. And uh, I take that every word that they say that's wrong and evil and un-American, and I make them eat every one of these words. They have to eat every one of these words. This is page 11. Why do judges stand on their heads so they can turn things over in their minds? And so the Tenth Circuit has written a malicious, vexatious, a frivolous and meritless paper. Again. And they're afraid to stand on their own two feet, so they go to other courts and say, oh, look, 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 other courts did the same thing. And Glendora says, this is fall ball. Uh, this is out of bounds. This is ultra virus. All oh, these people are so sick. And so down here, I suggest something that I'd like you people you television viewers, to take very seriously. I think maybe the best way to deal with these hoods who have kidnapped our government and our courts is not to go to court. Don't go to court anymore. Boycott the courts. Don't go to court. Then they'll all have to be fired because they won't have any business. Don't you think that's right? Conclusion. Here in Glendor has shown with alacrity the failure of the Tenth Circuit and its incestuous Judicial Council, why they should not demean themselves and shame America with their Nazism. Under penalty of perjury, Glendora has told the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, and always has to help her God, and you have not. Dated March the 25th, 2003, Anno Domini, yours in truth, Glendora. And here's another couple of pot shots at them. They're doing things wrong. Uh, where did this go? It went to Kelly, the uh, judge who signed this. Of course, it was just a baby law clerk out of, just fresh out of school that wrote it. It's all ghost written, this stuff. And to Taka, the chief judge of the Tenth Circuit, and to Tig, the chief clerk of the Tenth Circuit, for the Center for Judicial Accountability Incorporated to you, the Glendora TV audience, all important to George E. McDermott, a great soldier who has uh, exposed these people for what they are, crooks.
to make them to a matter for justice for Orrin Hatch, chairman of the House Judiciary, and to the House, excuse me, chairman of the Senate Judiciary, and to the House Judiciary. Opus 957, four hours, $11.20 to print and post. Uh, these people should be convicted and jailed for mail fraud. These papers they send through the mail are fraud, okay? And they should be put in jail for mail fraud, these United States district judges. The best thing to do is boycott. Don't go to court. Then they'll have to be fired because of no business. Add who to sue. Who to sue, that would be Omnibus 15, which is going on now. And speaking of Omnibus 15, the uh, Alpha defendants are Dean Jacobs of the First Circuit, and uh, the Beta defendants are the doctors uh, who kidnapped Franklin and did all kinds of things to him against his consent and just chalked up a bill for $58,000 and did nothing that was necessary. And that's the uh, beta defendants in Omnibus 15. And it's about 20 doctors, okay? 20 doctors or more. Unmanageable. So let me tell you about this bad landlord I have. I had my white chair on my stoop there. And he came in the middle of yesterday afternoon and surreptitiously absconded with a white chair and put his green chair there. He just doesn't seem to understand what it means to have possession of the premises. He's getting paid $725 a month for these premises, and he thinks he's still welcomed here. Well, he isn't. And this has been on my front stoop here for about two months, and I want this out of here. Isn't it a beautiful spring day? Isn't this right? And as Bob Turner says on March the 6th, 10 degrees below zero and uh, uh, three to six inches of snow. You remember that, folks. We couldn't go on the errands. We couldn't go on March 5th because it was freezing rain and we couldn't go on the errands on March 6th because of six inches of snow. And I was told there were two dead deer out there on the front lawn. We know how one was murdered by a terrible dog. I haven't been so affectionate about dogs ever since. And the other one, we don't know how it got on the front lawn. What do you think happened? It got hit by a car and it came over to die? No. We don't know what happened. But I wish, I wish there wasn't so much evil. But you have to have evil to get good. Newton's third law of motion. I know that God told me that. I'm not smart enough to think of it myself. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. For every good, there's an equal and opposite bad. For every bad, there's an equal and opposite good. So just keep going with the good. Be on the good side. Okay, it's time to go on air. This, this is such a funny little house. Must be fun to live in a little house like that. Something's wrong with the 1993 Lincoln. It acts, it runs as though it has a flat tire. Rubber dub dubs, I can't get the hood open. And it smells hot, as if something's burning. And I'm 55 miles from home. Folks, I'm going to feed the seagull. Now watch how quickly a loaf of bread goes. Nipping the bag.
Did they go? Last week they finished a loaf of bread in 45 seconds. It's warm. So they've gone. Where have they gone? I saw one earlier. They're not going to come anymore. What do I do with all this crack? What do you think this is, folks? A couple hundred dollars? I guess so. Let me show you the stuff I bought for the people in the midnight run. They go down to Manhattan. To the people who live in the streets, isn't that terrible? And I bought all these new socks for them and t-shirts and briefs. They need undies. And the church takes it down. Isn't that nice? Now, I see some seagulls. Let's see if they're going to eat anything.
something so strange. All the other times they came down and in haste and alacrity. No, they look like they're scared. Couldn't be that they're full. Okay, let's unload this into the trunk. There's more bread I bought him. He must be sick. It's no fun anymore. They don't eat their bread. There's the Twin Mountains. The mountains around here are magnificent, aren't they? They go all the way east to Stormville. Tulane Bridger is adorable. She's only a kid. She's awful cute. And she, we've become quite friendly with her. In fact, she's supposed to be up here Tuesday night. We really don't need a funeral director, do we? Because there's no arrangements. I mean, we just uh, come and get the bodies. Hello. <laughs> Here's a man going to work for the last day. The last day. day of work and the first day of freedom? What did you do? <laughs> what do you feel about it? Are you happy as can be? I've been very busy. You've been very busy. Yeah. You, haven't, you, haven't, you haven't had time to think They're, about it. I'm trying to train four people to do my job. Oh, no. Are they asking you to do Yesterday, that? Yesterday, two guys came down to learn lighting design. In oh, two really? hours really? that I learned in 14 years. <laughs> <laughs> so Lighting design? I stopped before I, I snowed them. I said, you've got enough <laughs> basics. Call me if you need me. <laughs> this is something that I had on my desk for many years, and I wanted you to have it. Oh, well, thank you. I got to put it. Can you read it to I'll me? I'll read it for you. Okay. It says, I asked for health that I might do greater things. I was given infirmity that I might do better things. I asked God for strength that I might achieve. I was made weak that I might learn to obey. I asked for riches that I might be happy. I was given poverty that I might be wise. I asked for power and the praise of men. I was given weakness to sense my need of God. I asked for all things that I might enjoy life. I was given life that I might enjoy all things. I got nothing I asked for but everything I hoped for. In spite of myself, my prayers were answered. I am among all men most richly blessed. That's so true. Now, you know who wrote that? I know I don't. Mm -hmm. But that's a gift for you. I thank you. And the other one, too, I passed it on from Micah. Oh, Bye -bye. Mal Malachi. So the last I, day. I packed up things yesterday and brought them home, and I'm going to pack the rest today. And the guys are taking me out for lunch down to the Raccoon Saloon. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a lot that you have to pack? To how many boxes? I, I spent uh, uh, until almost... 10 o'clock last night. Where? Packing stuff. At work? Yeah. You were at work. I right? have a lot of knickknacks. <laughs> and you got them all home now? No. <laughs> I got to do more today. How many hours? Two, three? I hope not too many. Yeah. I did the most of it. I took down all my signs uh, of any resemblance <laughs> that I worked there. Bye-bye. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you very much. It's a great day. Yes, it is. What are you going to do Monday morning? I'm going to put my stuff together for an art show that we have every year at the office. Oh, really? For six weeks, we have an annual art show. At the office? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It's mm -hmm. nice. We have a big atrium lobby, and people bring stuff in that they and their families have done. I told him, folks, that he'd better hurry up and not be late, because he'll get fired. <laughs> <laughs> Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs> Isn't that a great thing? He's 57 years old, and he's retiring. And Monday morning, he doesn't have to go to work. Uh, George Malone in the town of Greenberg, public access, called Glendora and said that the uh, town of Greenberg has changed its rules for public access and that uh, if I don't sign the papers by April 2nd, uh, then my TV show will be taken off of the TV. Well, what does that do to Glendora, right? Okay, so Glendora called them all. She called George Malone and she called the secretary in the town clerk's office of Frida Williams and she called Paul Finer. And... She said, 
uh, telephone notice is not sufficient. Uh, it has to be in writing. Glendora has to have 30 days. Uh, and uh, I wouldn't take Glendora's program off of TV because uh, you are a state actor and you come under Title 42 U.S. Code Section 1983 Civil Rights and Section 1985 Conspiracy. So I just wouldn't do that if I were you. And uh, Paul said, oh, well, if you email or me, uh, write me a letter or whatever. I have time to write a letter. This, they want this by April 2nd. So uh, the battle is on with the town of Greenberg, Westchester County, state of New York. Now, glory of God, Jean John Rowe, Public Access, Los Alamos, New Mexico. She has put 40 tapes into a box to send to me, and they're all Super VHS. And she's giving me these tapes. Now, this, isn't that a, isn't that a great thing? Isn't that wonderful? See, see how good that is? Now, I had sent Jean Tuesday, before she called, uh, $20 worth of tapes, because I found out at the post office you can send 100 tapes for $20. So she said that she will use that from time to time and go on with her policy of sending out 40 tapes at a time. Isn't that marvelous? And Harry Richardson at Staples gives me boxes copy paper boxes uh, for the museum. I wish I had time to work on the museum, but with these crooked judges and these crazy cable operators with their foolish and illegal <sighs> paperwork, it just eats up your life. This Sony camera has quite a few uh, special effects for fading. I'm trying to figure out how to set it up. Because you'll enjoy those. Folks, you have to hear this good news. City successfully denies franchise renewal. The Northern District Court of Ohio, that's Cleveland, folks, recently upheld, this, upheld the city of Brunswick Ohio's denial of a cable franchise renewal to Cablevision based on the operator's failure to provide 20 hours per week of local origination programming as required by the franchise. The court found that noncompliance with a local production obligation was a material breach of the franchise agreement. Hooray, hooray, hooray. Now on two counts, one that had happened to Cablevision Two, you know, uh, a cable operator losing a franchise is very, very, very rare. So two, that this rare occurrence happened. One, that it happened to Cablevision. And three, it was over public access. Big victory, folks. Big victory. Applause, 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 applause. Injured hand. See these things that come down on the Venetian blinds while well, I was pulling up the window and the end of one of those hit this hand and it filled it all up with fluid and at first it didn't hurt now it hurts and it's 
so uh, it was soaked in uh, Epsom salts and water that took the paint out and then this is Bengay and uh, an ace bandage Now legal paper is not done until I read it to you uh, this is March the 28th, 2003, Anno Domini, and it's in the uh, Judicial Council for the Fourth Circuit in Atlanta. Uh, and it's the matter of, well, petition by Glendora for review of Wilkins' Adamamia, Adonamics, of March the 10th. Maybe it should be Adam. Namia. So, page three. It started with Mary E. Stanley, United States District Court, Charleston, West Virginia. Omnibus 11. Uh, she was no good. Then it went to James T. Copenhaver Jr. And he failed America. And then Glendora complained to the Fourth Circuit. And here was more corruption. J. Harvey Wilkinson III. This was another vertical flush, or vortical, I should say, vortical flush. So Glendora complains to the incestuous judicial council. Uh, William W. Wilkins is now the chief judge, instead of Wilkinson's being the chief judge. And Wilkins is more chief than judge. The entire process is diseased. The Pablum, Wilkins writes, makes a true American shudder. McDermott calls it judicial tyranny. He got the phrase from Patrick Henry or Thomas Jefferson or Ben Franklin, one of those wizards who knew it was coming. March the 28th. 2003, Friday, United States Court of Appeals for the Fourth Circuit in the matter of a judicial complaint under Title 28 U.S. Code Section 351, number 03, for the year 03, 9007. What does that mean? Memorandum in order. This complaint is brought pursuant to Title 28 U.S. Code Section 351A. Well, at the time I brought it, it was Title 28 U.S. Code, Section 372, which provides an administrative remedy for, quote, conduct prejudicial to the effective and expeditious administration of the business of the courts, unquote, and for judicial inability to, quote, discharge all the duties of office by reason of mental or physical disability, unquote. Now, Glendora says this is exactly what Stanley, Copenhaver, and Wilkinson did. What Glendora wrote was true, accurate, exact, honest, real, precise, and it is so today. Their paragraph. Complainant alleges that a circuit judge engaged in judicial misconduct by failing to protect the public from bad judges. Complainant is dissatisfied with the judge's ruling on her prior judicial complaints. She alleges that the judge closed his eyes to misconduct, covered up for other judges, and failed to apply the law. To that, Glendora says, Ibn. Okay, let's go on to page Four, 
did I just read you a page for? Okay. No, I guess we're on page five. Seven. When a circuit judge reviews and determines the allegations contained in a judicial misconduct complaint, his determination is subject to review by the Judicial Council, but they shouldn't have a comma there, so I crossed it out. Cannot be challenged by a successive judicial complaint attacking the circuit judge's ruling. Such a judicial complaint is directly related to the merits of a decision and subject to dismissal pursuant to 28 U.S. Code Section 352B. 1A2 in Rideau 70 F 3rd 56 8th Circuit 1995. Good Lord, this is the year 2003. But Glendora says, the decision had no merits. The decision had no merits. This complaint is accordingly, and Glendora says accordingly is non sequitur, dismissed pursuant to 28 U.S. Code, Section 372B1A2, as directly related to the merits of the judge's ruling on complainant's prior judicial complaints. It is so ordered. And Glendora says the judge's rulings had no merits. And it's signed. William W. Wilkins, Chief Judge. The judge's rulings had no merits, nor does this paper by Wilkins. And he has no juror, he has no date, and no municipality. Let's go over to page 6. Glendora has to discern a method to convict you people of mail fraud. What you send through the mail is fraudulent. Now here's what Glendora is cogitating. Since the courts are no good, and since the courts have been kidnapped, and since the injured can get no justice because of the self-interest of judges, clerks, lawyers, then the thing to do is to stop using the courts. Boycott the courts. They are no good anyway, so stop using them. Then it must follow as night to day, Shakespeare said, Polonius said to Hamlet, the courts will shrink to de minimis, and you people will go by attrition, by atrophy. Now, for those of you who turned in late, tuned in late, this is a matter of four bad judges, Stanley, and Copenhagen in the United States District Court, West Virginia, Charleston, uh, Wilkins and Wilkinson in the United States Court of Appeals, Richmond. And Glendora is making them eat their words and telling them about their bad papers and their bad behavior. Now, so follow us night to day, the courts will shrink to de minimis, and you people will go by attrition and atrophy. And God's people will not return to you using the courts until they are promised good judges. Let's go on to page 5. Or 7. Whatever. Glendora should impart this revelation to the adsentitious, those who have come into knowledge, the esoteric, known only to the initiated few, like a matter of justice and McDermott at all. She should convey this to the adsentitious, that's you folks who have been to court and have had personal knowledge of this, how you can't get justice. And there's Katie. 
Thank you, Katie, very much. And paragraph 12, you should not deadline your papers by the date you receive, saying, how does, Glendora, how does Glendora know how long the U.S. Postal Service takes to get a paper to you? You should deadline your papers postmarked April 10th, 03. Even the United States Supreme Court knows that. Under penalty of perjury, Glendora has told the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, and always has, so help her God. Stanley, Copenhagen, Wilkinson, and Wilkins have not Dated March the 28th, 2003, Anno Domini, Yours in Truth, Glendora. Now, here's their letter to Glendora. And it says, encloses a copy of an order dismissing your judicial complaint. You have the right to petition the Fourth Circuit Judicial Council for review of the order if you choose to file a petition for review. Your petition must be filed in the clerk's office no later than April 10, 2003. See Rule 6 of the so-and-so, which is, of course, obstructions of justice, their rules. And they don't say how many sets. And this is signed yours truly, Patricia O'Connor. Or it's not signed, it's signed by somebody else. And it goes to Honorable William. Uh, who, William W. Wilkins, Honorable J. Harvey Wil Wilkinson III, and Mr. Samuel W. Phillips. Uh, you notice that I crossed out the Honorable. And Mr. Samuel Phillips must be the circuit executive, so-called. And what was on page 10? service list. A service list is to those, uh, to uh, Stanley, Copenhaver, Wilkinson, Wilkins, Phillips, Connor, uh, Orrin Hatch, Senate Judiciary Committee, House Judiciary Committee, A Matter of Justice, Mecham, the administrator of U.S. courts, if you can call them that. Uh, you, a chat with Glendora, audience, uh, the Center for Judicial Accountability, who to sue, and to George McDermott. And the cost on it was $9.31 to print and post, and four hours to do it, and this is opus number 958. Thank you. 
the Baron Clark Spaniel puppy in his arms. Right. And he sees his friend and he says, Joe, another friend. And he says, Joe, what do you think of this Clark Spaniel puppy I got from my wife? And Joe said, that's not a bad trade. <laughs> found another bad judge and asking for justice about one bad judge you run into another bad judge March the 28th 2003 Anno Domini the Judicial Council of the Sixth Circuit in Cincinnati this is about a judicial complaint against the United States District Judge Patricia Gone, and that's in Cleveland Ohio uh, Glendora petitions review of Martin's Memorandum and Order of March the 10th. When Boyce Martin failed the United States of America on Glendora's appeal a year ago. Glendora let it go because Boyce Martin got John McCullough off of the bench in Memphis, Tennessee. But six months later, McCullough is back on the bench. So Glendora is bringing Martin's memorandum in order to what it deserves. Either Martin did not read Glendora's complaint or he did not understand it, or he deliberately lied. Title 18 U.S. Code, Section 1001. Title 18 is the criminal code. Title 28 is the civil code. Uh, the Section 372 has bit the dust. It is now Section 351. In other words, Martin is, doesn't know the law. He's the chief judge of the Sixth Circuit in Cincinnati. He doesn't know the law. 372 is no longer uh, extant, it is now Section 351, Congress revised it, the Judicial Reform Law of 2002. Glendora's complaint against Gone, that's Patricia Gone in the United States District Court in Cleveland, is hardly frivolous, but Martin's memorandum and order are.
Gondora's complaint against Gon cannot be dismissed on the grounds the complaint was related to the merits of Gon's order. Her order had no merits. Glendora made it abundantly clear that Gon's conduct was prejudicial to the effective and eff efficacious administration of the business of the courts. And the business of the courts is what, folks? Yes, justice. So we have covered the first... Uh, four paragraphs of this slop written by some kid uh, fresh out of school. And it says, for lack of your ejection, and Glendora says, this is as bad as Gon's uh, order. And they have and but. What's that, folks? And Glendora tells Martin, you lie. The complainant alleges that she Failed to receive timely notice of the dismissal of her case and that the named defendants in her case were not served by court with the order of dismissal. There is no allegation that the district judge had any role in this failure, if any, of the clerical duty of notification to the parties. The complainant also alleges that the dismissal was wrong in that she was entitled to a default judgment in the matter. Well, Glendora made it abundantly clear that a deputy in the clerk's office stated that she, meaning gone, should have sent out the orders. You are being totally illegal about brushing aside the motion for default judgment. You are cheating. Now, here is your fifth lie. Here is your fifth lie. It is you, Boyce Martin, who is being frivolous. Also, you are betraying America. And then here is his sixth lie. You think judges don't lie, huh? You think they don't cheat? You think they don't steal, right? Well, go to court. Your entire office is subject to dismissal. Now this is uh, Gundor opposing the memorandum and order so-called of Boyce Martin, the chief judge of the United States Court of Appeals in Cincinnati. And he's already told six lies. And he says, uh, the judge complained about and therefore is subject to dismissal. And Glendora says, your work is totally unsubstantiated. unsubstantiated. And there is his signature. And he doesn't give municipality and state in his jura. In other words, his jura is half empty, like his head. Uh, yours is frivolous, vexatious, and malicious. Fifteen. And there's the order. And now he says the Honorable Patricia A. Gunn. Well, Glendora crossed out the Honorable. And she also told him to substantiate that Patricia Gunn is Honorable. I doubt that you ever read it, Glendora says. It should have been entitled Sixth Circuit, not Judicial Council. See, it goes, the complaint goes to the chief judge of the circuit. And then if you want to, uh, the Judicial Council of the Sixth Circuit, which is the same group of judges, it's all incestuous. Uh, then if you want it reviewed, it goes to the Judicial Council, but... This should not have been in the Judicial Council because it should have been in the Court of Appeals. 
And again, he has the wrong law. He has 372 when it's 351. And it's not misconduct or disability, it's misconduct and disability. Okay. Now, we include the good news that I told you earlier, that Cablevision lost a franchise in Brunswick, Ohio, because they didn't provide 20 hours of local origination programming, as specified in the franchise. Big victory. One, it beats Cablevision. That's always good. And two, it beat Cablevision. It's very hard for, uh, to get rid of a cable provider. In fact, this is the first one I ever knew that did. And uh, that's another big victory. And then three, uh, the victory is based on public access. Uh, Glendora has to discern a method to conduct, uh, to convict you people of mail fraud. What you send through the mail is fraudulent. Uh, this is talking to the Sixth Circuit. United States Court of Appeals. Now, here is what Glendora is cogitating. Since the courts are no good, since the courts have been kidnapped, since the injured can get no justice because of the self-interest of judges, clerks, and lawyers, then the thing to do is to stop using the courts. Boycott the courts, folks. They are no good anyway, so stop using them. Then it must follow as night to day that the courts will shrink to de minimis. And you people will go by attrition, by a trophy, meaning you judges, you lawyers, and you clerks. And God's people will not return to using the courts until they are promised good judges. Now, Glendora should impart uh, this revelation to the adsentitious, uh, those who have come into knowledge, the esoteric, those uh, known only by the initiated few, like a matter of justice and George McDermott. And you should not deadline your papers by the date you receive them. You should deadline them by the date that they are postmarked. You should say to Glendora, your letter has to be postmarked by April 10th. They can't say it has to be in our office by April 10th, because how do I know how long it's going to take the United States Postal Service to deliver it? Under penalty of perjury, uh, Glendora has told the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, and always has, so help her God. Gone and Martin have not. Dated March the 28th. 2003, Anno Domini, yours in truth, Glendora, postscript, Glendora has sued Gon. Gon was sued in Omnibus 14 on March the 5th. Amen. The United States Post Office had put out a series of stamps on bats. I think it's very appropriate to use these stamps on these uh, letters I'm writing to judges. I used to use flag stamps because it's a patriotic matter, but today we're using bats. Folks, how would you like to wake up in the morning to a stack of legal papers like this? Good grief. Good grief. I don't know, I'm making a list of them. I'm trying to prioritize them. These couch potato judges. Couch potato judges. Couch potato judges. I guess the most important 
is to file a judicial misconduct and disability complaint against Armand, a United States District Judge in Brooklyn. File that in the Second Circuit before the Second Circuit rules that I can't file any more complaints against bad judges. Uh, and then the second one is answering, um, and I guess it has to be in by first week of April. I should send it on April Fools today. Couch potato judges. Couch bench potatoes, that's what they are. Bench potatoes. These bench potatoes. Here is a chilling thought. The Albany Times Union. Bombs quiet Iraq TV. Bombs quiet Iraq TV. That is my point. Bombs could quiet our TV. We never ever thought that our TV could be uh, quieted. Well, that's not a good word. Zapped. Okay. Rockland County, sit up and take notice. Uh, this is Jim Lehman's newspaper, The Rockland Reporter. Deputy Mayor Appel resigns. Tells Mayor Marshall, I've got a secret. The mayor responds, tell the truth, and I pay the consequences. Clean up the village green. Administration uses public funds to distribute political mail. That should be a no-no. Now, Marshall won, I believe, by eight votes, and they were all absentee ballots. So there's something uh, going on there. Uh, this is a cartoon. Susan Glantz, more than a village clerk. Deputy mayor, village clerk, village taxpayers escape the wrath of a federal judge in a civil rights case. Uh, this is about a Hindu temple, and uh, we got to find out who the federal judge was. Oh my goodness, the federal judge is Broderick. Broderick died in 1995 or 1994. He was a terrible judge. Terrible judge. But then all federal judges are terrible. The cartoon's kind of cute. Nicholas Ganperson says, trustee says, Mayor, is it true what they're saying about Alvin? And Marshall, the mayor, says, I swear I don't know anything. Besides, Alvin's uh, entitled to his privacy. And uh, Deputy Mayor Alvin says, I guess. Why would anyone want to uh, wash their money? If I step down, who's going to write all those code enforcement violations? And down here says, absolutely no cameras allowed in Village Hall. And what does he say? Hmm. So they finished the temple. Ethics Commissioner Melvin Klinger, by appointment only, out to lunch. Susan Glantz, treasurer. This reminds me, I got to tell Alvin, his probation officer called. Well, uh, regardless, my heart goes out to Alvin because I know how crooked the United States Marshal, the FBI, and the U.S. Attorney are. I know that those three wonderful agencies have been taken over by gangsters. They should be out doing good, but all they do is evil and self-interest. So my heart really goes out to Alvin. Uh, the oath of office help wanted. Plenty of job openings in Rockland County will soon be made available. Stony Point. Supervisor has notified, has not filed an oath of office. It's rude to slam a door in someone's face. 
home of Mayor Marshall at 19 Chestnut Drive, Pomona. Also conducts marketing business there. And known as uh, Creative Enterprises Limited. This is the Rockland Reporter. And uh, it is put out by Jim Lehman. Who did not file the federal lawsuit that he told me he would. And that I worked with him on it. He has turned his back on it. We'll have to turn him around. This is Glendora. I chat with Glendora. On 38 cable TV stations across the United States. So I took three hours this morning to write a judicial misconduct and disability complaint. And I can't tell you who it is. Because these dirty judges cover up for one another. And... Uh, it's a rule that you can't, uh, it has to be confidential. Now, if you do anything wrong, they're going to tell everybody. But these dirty judges have to be un-American and anti-public and anti-democracy and keep it secret because somebody's complaining about their misconduct and their disability. This is Omnibus 15. And the caption is done. And it took three hours to find the addresses of all of these defendants beyond the Escalapians, the doctor cheaters, the medical cheaters, okay, the people who make an industry out of sick people when they're most vulnerable. Here's the first page of the caption, the alpha defendants and the beta defendants. Those are the Escalapians. And then here's the Cablevision defendants, Sacconi, LaPlante, Peggy Anderson, Diane Bennett, Charles Dolan, James L. Dolan, Matthew Dill, Thomas Garga, Charles A., former Cablevision Systems Corporation. The Tenth Circuit the Ninth Circuit, San Francisco, the Tenth Circuit's in call in Denver, Colorado. Uh, the uh, appellate term, Supreme Court, State of New York, 9th and 10th Judicial Districts. Uh, the Richmond, Virginia, 4th Circuit. The uh, 6th Circuit in Cincinnati. Uh, Laurie Batanani, Cox Communications. The 11th Circuit in Atlanta, uh, Carol Armand, a district judge.
East 95 7th Street, San Francisco, New York. The Gamma Defendants. Cheat, folks. Courts cheat, cheat, cheat. Look at George McDermott's case. Look at Dr. Pollock's case. Courts cheat. Cheat, 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 lie, and steal. Courts. United States courts. The Canon camcorder has gone over to Sherry's house, Sherry and Bill Donnelly, because their house is delivered. And remember, it was parked in a field for <laughs> a whole week, and now they're settling it down, four pieces. They're a modular home. So the Canon camera has gone over there with Sherry to videotape that. You might like to see a minute or two of that. And what is going on here? One of the worst people in the worst, one of the worst courts in the United States, the Eastern District of New York, uh, Brooklyn. Oh, my hand is really ruined. I really can't lift this stuff. Uh. But here's the defendants. I'm going to have to read this to you. The defendants are BCAT, Cablevision, and the New York State Public Service Commission. And this is a terrible, slimy piece of work by Carol B. Amon, a so-called United States District Judge. Okay, the paper is 70 uh, pages long. It's... Uh, Notice of motion and affirmation in the support to for relief from her order of March the 10th, which I'll read you. And pursuant to Rule 60B, Federal Rules of Civil Procedure. Okay, it's being printed now. The envelopes are all done. And we're up to page 17, printing. And Franklin is uh, counting out sets of 10 because we had to make 13 sets, 70 pages. And now it's time for a peanut butter sandwich on home-baked bread. Uh, this is a special edition of a chat with Glendora for all you folks who are unfortunate enough to have as your only federal court the Eastern District of New York. This is a 60-page legal paper. The judge on it is Carol B. Amon, A-M-O-N. April Fool's Day, the year 2003. United States District Court, Eastern District of New York. Unfortunately, even though the Sony is back from the factory, I loan the Sony to Sherry because her house has been delivered. It's in four pieces, and it's being all put together today and settled under the foundation. So I loaned her the Sony, I mean the Canon, because it had more battery in it than the uh, Sony did. But you see, the Canon has a close-up mic. And the Canon has a remote. The Sony does not. A Glendora plaintiff versus the Brooklyn Community Access Television, BCAT, and its board of directors, and Onita Coward Mayers, and Domingo Martin, and Nicole A. Gordine, at 57 Rockwell Place, second floor, Brooklyn, New York, 11217. Those are the Alpha defendants. Diane Bennett, Caitlin Gonza, Cablevision, One Media Crossways, Woodbury, New York, 11798. And Charles F. Dolan, 330 Cove Neck Road, Oyster Bay, New York, 11771. And James L. Dolan and Cablevision Systems Corporation, and uh, Jack Budill, and Thomas Garger, and 
there's some more. Harassers of public access. Charles A. Forma. 1111 Stewart Avenue, Bethpage, New York, 11714. Anne Maurice Cunningham, a resident of Connecticut, at 47 Purdy Street, Harrison, New York, 10528. And Robert M. Callagy, their lawyer for hire, and his law firm, Sally Stevens, Burke & Burke, at 230 Park Avenue, New York, New York. They are the Beta Defendants. The Gamma Defendants are Maureen O'Helmer, the uh, Chairman of the Public Service Commission, State of New York, Chad Hume, Thomas Isabella, Stephen Shea, John Figliosi, and the Public Service Commission of the State of New York, Free Empire State Plaza, Albany, New York, 12202.